Now that you're familiar with using integration to work with inverse trig functions, we're now going to be adding a step. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to evaluate an integral involving inverse trig functions by completing the square first. Alrighty, let's jump right into a problem. I notice in this one, because of the setup and the square root and the squared in there, I know that I'm going to be attempting to make this problem look like an arc sine problem, but we do need to complete the square in the denominator to set, get the problem set up. So I'm first of all going to factor out the negative. So I'll have x squared plus 6x, and then I'm going to leave myself a little space, and then um, remember in completing the square, we'll take that middle term and divide by 2, so I'll get 3, and then 3 squared will be positive 9, and then really, since this minus sign is out front, we introduced a minus 9 to the problem, so to undo it, we need to do a plus 9 on the outside, and then from here, when I go to rewrite this, this will be actually negative x plus 3 squared plus 9, and then from here, I'm just going to rewrite my integral. I have the integral of dx over the square root. I'm going to write the 9 first this time, so it'll be 9 minus x plus 3 squared. And then from here, this is an arc sine setup, so we just need to identify our parts. My u would be the x plus 3. The derivative of x plus 3 is just 1 dx, and notice I have that. And then my a would be the square root of 9, which is 3. Okay, and then if I did rewrite this problem, um, I'm actually just not even going to rewrite the problem. It is an arc sine setup. I know all my pieces are there, so I'm just ready to take the integral. And my formula is just simply arc sine u over a, and that will just be x plus 3 over 3 plus c. All right, let's try another problem. Again, by looking at this setup, I can tell that it's going to be arc sine because it does have a square and a square root, and there's nothing out front. So again, my goal will be to get it to look like an arc sine problem. I will complete the square again. I will bring a negative out front first and put it in order. So I'll get x squared minus 3x, leave myself a space. And then if I take negative 3 and divide it by 2, that would be negative 3 halves. And if I square negative 3 halves, I'll get positive 9 fourths. And technically, I really did a minus 9 fourths into the problem. So on the outside, I'll do a plus 9 fourths. If I rewrote that, that would be x minus 3 halves squared plus 9 fourths. And then from here, if I rewrite this problem, it's going to be 1 over the square root. I'd like to write my constant first, so 9 fourths minus x minus 3 halves squared dx. And it definitely is an arc sine setup. I just need to, again, identify my parts. u will equal x minus 3 halves du, the derivative of x minus 3 halves, is just 1 dx, and I totally have that. And then my a, the square root of 9 fourths, is 3 halves. So I have everything that I need. So my answer is going to be arc sine u over a, so x minus 3 halves divided by 3 halves. And I don't need to put plus c, and I don't really need to simplify this because I'm going to be plugging things in. I'm going to evaluate it at 9 fourths and 3 halves. So, if I plug in 9 fourths, 9 fourths minus 6 fourths would be 3 fourths divided by 3 halves, and then minus arc sine. If I plug 3 halves in, 3 halves minus 3 halves is 0. And now from here, that would simplify 3 fourths times 2 thirds would end up giving me 1 half. So, I have the arc sine of 1 half minus the arc sine of 0. Sine is the y value, so I'd be looking for where does the y value equal 1 half, and that would be at pi over 6, and then minus where would the y value equal 0, that would be at 0. So my final answer in this problem would be pi over 6. All right, let's try to tackle one more. Because of the setup of this problem in the section that we're dealing with, I know that I'm going to be looking for an arc tan this time. There we go. Pen's getting crazy there. Um, and I'm ready to complete the square. So. I'm going to have x to the fourth minus 4x squared, leave myself a space. I'm going to put my plus 9 on the outside. And then completing the square, we'll take that middle term and divide it by 2. That would give me negative 2. If I square that, that will give me plus 4. Um, nothing that I need to worry about on the outside, so I can go ahead and put a minus 4 on the outside. So this will end up factoring as x squared minus 2 squared plus 5. And I'm just ready to rewrite this problem. So it's going to be x squared minus 2 squared plus 5 dx. And it does look like an arctan setup. I just need to check my parts here. I'm going to have u equals x squared minus 2 
my du, the derivative of x squared minus 2, would be 2x dx. I do have x dx. I'm missing the 2. So 1 half goes on the outside. And then my a would be the square root of 5, which is the square root of 5. All right, so it is 100% set up for an arctangent problem. So we'll carry down that 1 half. Then it is 1 over a. So 1 over the square root of 5. Arc tan u over a. So x squared minus 2 over the square root of 5. And then I'm going to go one more step and just clean it up a little bit here. We'll have 1 over the 2 square root of 5. Arc tan u over a. And then plus c. And voila, we got it. So hopefully now you can complete the square so that you can find the integral of an inverse trig function.